boxing fans, it's your boy Big Nige, it's when fists fly, and welcome to our latest edition of Boxing Weekly Roundup. Boxing fans, boxing fans, boxing fans. I told you it could be a potential banana skin. But guess what? Everyone's like, nah, Dylan White will beat him, he's four years old, he'll beat him, he'll beat him. Listen, elite boxers, they find a way. And that, in my opinion, has got to be the most dirtiest uppercut I've seen in boxing to date. Because, boy, I've, do you know how many times I've watched it on replay? I'm, I'm going to try and practice that move when I go to boxing classes during this week. Because it was beautiful. First and foremost, respect to Dylan White because I heard his interview. He come humble with it. But Alexander Povetkin. <laughs> AJ ain't nothing but a number in the words of Derek Chisora. Boy, that knockout was dirty, T, T. That's me. <laughs> but on a real, on a real. Um, Dylan White, obviously, was dominating the fight. Everyone was saying he was dominating, and he was, but I wasn't really impressed. I felt like his feet was quite slow. Yes, his jabs were very impressive, and he caught him with two left hooks, but I genuinely believe those two knockdowns in round four were uh, a curse because he got he completely got too comfortable in round five and heavyweight boxing Buyakasha, good night Vienna and that's what happens you can't lose concentration at that elite level and expect to not get punished it's that simple I know a lot of people are going to say ah oh, the split with Mark Tibbs uh, possibly overtraining in Portugal for five months it's simple, it's a lack of concentration. And I genuinely believe um, he will learn from this. He will learn from this. The same way he lost to AJ many moons ago, he will learn from this and he will become a better fighter. Talking points. Um, Alexander Povetkin said after the fight that they had studied Dylan White and they noticed that he was always constantly open for the uppercut. So they practiced on that shot constantly, constantly, over and over again. I listened to an interview with Ben Davison. First and foremost, big shout out to Ben Davison because I don't think he gets enough credit he deserves. He is a very intellectual trainer. I watched his video and he said that Dylan White constantly leans over. So when he throws the jab, instead of him to step in and step out, because he's got quite a long reach, he tends to just lean forward and jab in and jab out. That has his that has his positive hands and his negatives. Unfortunately, the negative side of it is he leans over and he's open to get caught. He also he also stated in the um, in the interview that that same shot was the one that AJ knocked him out with, Oscar Rivas, and obviously now Povetkin. So clearly, it's something that Dylan White and his team need to work on. But let's not don't get twisted because. Xavier Miller and David Caldwell, if you were listening to the, the ringside um, when he was sitting down in the corner, they were telling him, stop leaning forward. So Dylan White either took it on board or he didn't. Well, he didn't really, but he got caught. But what's the point of bringing in someone like David Caldwell if you're not going to listen to key factors in, a, in, a, in an elite fight? Because he got punished. And I'm not even joking, like, I've watched, I've watched that shot and when Povetkin threw that shot, before Dylan White even landed, Dylan White was out cold. It kind of reminded me, um, it was on par with possibly the knockout that Povetkin gave to David Price. I saw David Price's soul come out. Watch that replay. He's, before he knocks the ground, he goes, bah. that was, it was on levels with that. Obviously, Dylan White's soul didn't come out. I don't think so, but it was a dirty shot. But as mentioned in the, um, when he, in his post-match interview, he knows where he's went wrong. He's gonna learn from it. And they've already, they're already in talks about exercising the rematch. But first things first, since when does the WBC interim title, can you put a rematch clause? But then I thought to myself, we're talking about Eddie Hearn here. This is a shrewd businessman. There's no way he's gonna allow his elite fighters to go take voluntary fights without having a backup plan. And that's just Eddie Hearn in a nutshell. Real business, businessman. A big shout out to you again. I do believe when the rematch takes place, they're, they're talking about November, December, I do believe Dylan White wins, but this time 
when he's in for the kill, once he's damaged his opponent, you got a, you, you got a, you got maxim, maximum maximum violence is what you're talking about, my bro. You got to take advantage because I know the likes of Wilder, AJ, when they see that their opponents are hurt, it's no lele, no long team. They're going in, bam. You can't let them regroup and try and come and catch you. And that's exactly what we saw um, in this fight. But again, Povetkin, big shout out to yourself because you're still a fight in you. Like, everyone says, oh yeah, he's 40, he's 40. But listen, I guarantee he still beats a lot of men in the heavyweight with ease because he's highly skilled, uh, beautiful amateur record, Olympic gold, med gold medalist in 2004. Like, the honours and accolades go on. So, I'm not surprised. Everyone's saying it's a shock defeat. I'm not surprised because I did believe it was a potential banana skin, but I expected Dylan White to pull through on points at least. At least, and now we know that Dylan White can't really, can't really fight on the inside as much as we thought. He needs to box on the outside, but then again, he needs to work on his feet. I think he genuinely is quite top heavy. Even after he got the knockdown and he was walking out the ring, he was still, his legs were still moving janky, like they were moving like jelly. So I believe he needs to work on, obviously he's not going to be able to get this done in a short space of time, but he just needs to work on the mistakes. And I believe he pulls through. Um, the reaction on social media is expected because Dylan White is, no one, is not one person to shy away from exposing boxers when they're in, when they get a massive defeat. So it was expected to get the backlash the likes of Derek Chisora. Oi, right, mate, all I'm saying is age is nothing but a number. You've got T Tyson Fury tweeting out 40 and proud. Obviously, that's. Are we, are we going to see Tyson Fury versus Dylan White? Or, Tyson, or Dylan White versus Deontay Wilder? Who knows? He needs to get past Povetkin first. Um, and then obviously, you've got the likes of Andy Ruiz. <laughs> And the, Reeves, and the Reeves didn't hold back. He put out a video basically saying... Tell you the truth, I, I was so happy that why he fucking got his ass knocked the fuck out. You know why? Because he doesn't have respect for the fighters. Me personally, I don't say he deserves everything that comes his way because I don't wish bad upon anyone. But boxing is a sport. You've got to respect the competitors because it's a hard sport as it is. Do you know what I mean? So, and the Reeves. And then Bob Arum. These were his... He put out a tweet. I... After reading this tweet, I genuinely believe he wasn't him that put it out, but these were his exact words. Dylan White was so busy fighting for his WBC mandatory position that he didn't see Povetkin's uppercut, which knocked him out cold, and which knocked him cold on his ass, basically. Pulev will KO Joshua next. London bridges are falling. Bob Aaron, Bob Aaron, Bob Aaron. I say your name three times because, bro, I do not know what you are talking about. London bridges are falling. That's such an American thing. After reading that, I genuinely believe that wasn't him, him tweeting that. We're talking about eight-year-old, eight-year-old promoter. Where's he gonna have the time to be tweeting that? So I believe it's someone that tweeted it for him, but Pavek, White beats Pavekin in the rematch. I don't know about convincingly, but he will, he will beat him. And AJ beats your boy Pulev convincingly, I believe. End of discussion. Katie Taylor, the Irish sensation, has retained her, title, her lightweight titles against Delphine Persoon. I'll be honest with you, first and foremost, um, I expected more from Katie Taylor. I expected her to win by a landslide. It, the, the win wasn't convincing. It was a, a tight contest, but considering she's already done 10 rounds with her prior um, last year, I expected her to, be, to beat her with a bit more leeway, I'd say. Um, the judges, these were the judges' cards. 98-93 in favour of Taylor. 96-94 in, in favour of Taylor. 96-94 in favour of Katie Taylor. So, basically, all three judges uh, were in favour of Katie Taylor. Hand on my heart, I do not know what those judges were smoking. They were smoking something because 98-93. 96 94 I can agree with because that's literally by one round. I can hold my hands up. It was that type of contest that it literally couldn't it could have been a draw or could have gone in favour of Katie Taylor. But 98 93, someone needs to have a look at that judge because he's either he needs a new contact lenses or he needs new glasses because he was seeing a different fight, in my opinion. Um credit to Delphine Persoon because 
The same way she took that fight in the first in Madison Square Garden last year is the same approach she's done it again. Her work rate is relentless. Constantly, always in your face, always busy. And it's kind of difficult to look good against someone that's constantly on the front foot trying to knock you down. Um, I think that she is a credible opponent and I, she was talking about in an interview, I was, I was quite interested, I was quite, um, sh not shocked, but quite intrigued to know in an interview, she mentioned that she felt that like Katie won the fight and she deserved the victory and that she feels like she might go down to super featherweight because she just can't seem to hold the weight and generate power. So I think that was maybe the issue with her in the fight. She, once she knew she couldn't match Katie Taylor in terms of skill set, so the aim was to try and apply the pressure and catch her with a heavy shot, but clearly there was no power to knock her down. Um, but massive respect to Delphine Persoon. I'd love to see her on another matchroom fight, um, but Katie Taylor's victorious and I can't, I can't fault that. She's a true champion. She, she, I wouldn't say she wrote her wrong because she didn't, she, officially she didn't lose the first fight, but she did. But she put a better performance and she won the, the second fight. Um, what's next for Katie Taylor? In my opinion, they need to get that Amanda Serrano fight. I want to see if she's, not even that she's the real deal, but more say Amanda Serrano because Amanda Serrano has been calling out Katie Taylor for a while now. She believes she's got her she's got her number. I don't know why they didn't uh, agree on terms to fight in this matchroom fight camp, but hopefully maybe next year we'll get to see. Boxing fans, let me know your thoughts. Who wins that fight, Katie Taylor or Amanda Serrano? And the new Chris Too Slick Congo stops Luther Clay in the ninth round. Massive congrats to um, Chris Congo. First and foremost, before we even go into his um, performance, I really underestimated Luther Clay. He's a tough cookie. He's got a style that not, is not pleasing to the eye, but is very effective. I saw what he was trying to do, work the body, grapple, just disrupt um, Too Slick's style, the boxer move. And I genuinely believe he beats a lot of um, our, our domestic fighters in, in this country in the world weight division. Um, my brother suggested he would love to see Luther Clay Conor Ben. I would love to see that. I, and I and I no disrespect to Conor Ben, but I think he beats him as well. I say how it is. Um, Chris Congo, for someone that's been out for over 16 months, my bro, solid performance all round. You boxed and moved. For, for, for a while you've been waiting for the opportunity to fight on a massive platform and you took that opportunity with both hands, well deserved um, WB Global Welterweight you're now officially world ranked um, there's some fights out there that I want to see you in I, I would like to see you against Conor Ben honestly, Echo Osman um, Josh Kelly there's even I, do you, is there even need for him to go down the British route and fight for the British title against Chris Jenkins? I don't know. Or does he just go for the European title with David Evanesson? Who knows? The sky's the limit for Too Slick. And the funniest thing is, if he can put on a performance like that with not fighting since April 2019, then once, he, once he's getting regular fights, then who knows what he can achieve. Dylan White stated that he believes he's the best um, welterweight in the country. He put a, he put on a performance yesterday to say, yeah, this is me being, this is me, this is a performance that I can do without being as without fighting in so long. Imagine what I can do. So I look forward to seeing how his career unfolds from now. I think him signing to Dylan White has bacon has basically opened a new leash of life for him. And I look forward to seeing what happens next, man. Because yeah, too slick. Watch out, watch out, guys. Too slick is on the rise. There were some also um, exciting fights on the undercard. Uh, Jack Cullen and Zach Chelly. Absolute robbery. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Zach Chelly won that fight, in my opinion, convincingly. Um, again, this is the, the side of boxing that I'm not that I'm not too keen on. I mean, there's a lot of corruption behind the scenes. I, I don't even. I won't even say corruption. It's just absolute robbery. It was the same judge. Check this, boxing fans. It was the same judge that gave Katie Taylor 93 
9893 to Delphi Bassoon is the same person that called the draw for um, Zach Chelly and Jack Cullen. What fight were you watching, bro? Honestly. Listen, you need to lay off the drugs. Drugs is bad for you, bro, because you were smoking something that made you impact uh, an absolute robbery of a score. Zach Chelly won that fight, and I was impressed with Zach Chelly because I've seen him fight before. I saw him fight against Umar Sadiq, and I've watched him, and I've always thought, He's literally all about brute strength and power. He's just not not much skill, very young, and he just uses his brute force to, to beat fighters. But yesterday's performance, in my opinion, Saturday's performance, as I say, in my opinion, was a mature performance. He boxed, thrown through some beautiful shots, combinations, and I hope that Eddie Hearn gets him on the matchroom fight, uh, the matchroom card more often because. I genuinely believe he's got he's got there's a talent there. Um, Jack Cullen, I don't know. You stepped up in weight. You say you say you looked you say you look more, you feel more comfortable in that weight. I don't know, man. I think I think I think you might need to go back down to middleweight to be honest. But who am I to tell you? But that's just my opinion. I don't think it was a convincing. Uh, Vic's convincing draw and I, and I genuinely believe Jack Chelly had your number and if the rematch was to take place I genuinely believe Jack Chelly beats you this time convincingly um, also on the card was Alan Babbage and Sean Winters <laughs> the savage that's what he calls himself absolutely ruthless love his style he's just absolutely just coming forward aggressive he doesn't mind getting hit and he's literally just slipping slipping to catch you with that left hook or right hook. And we saw he done it to Winters, knocked him out in the third round or second round, I believe. I believe he hasn't even gone past, he said that was his fourth fight and he hasn't gone past the third round ever since. Uh, look, he, as I met, as mentioned before, he was a regular sparring partner for Dylan White. So I look forward to seeing him on more cards as well. Um, at the end of the interview, they asked him, would you change your style if you come up against quality opponents? He just said, listen, that's my style, bro. <laughs> Rago, like, no long team. That's how he fights. He's not going to change it for no one. He knows if he continues to apply pressure, he gets the knockout. Interestingly, he's from Croatia and he called out Philip Hergovic. Apparently, I don't know if they got some beef from back in the day, but he's saying he insulted him and that's who he wants next. At first, I thought, bro, respect for calling him out, but you need to learn, to, you need to just slow your roll, bro, because... Hergovic is an Olympian, but then having said that, I checked Babic's record amateur-wise, and he's got a very good record as an amateur. He's got over 60 knockouts in the amateur game, so they probably fought back home under the radar for we don't know, and he probably knows he's got his number, so I don't know. Eddie Hearn, wheel and dealer, can you make that fight happen? I think it might not be for his next fight, but I'll give it a few more fights, and yeah, why not? Because Hergovic... Don't get me wrong, Hergovic is good, but I don't think he's been he's been tested just as yet. And that would be a bit of a, a bit of a rivalry. The two Croats going against each other, who wins? So let me know your thoughts on that one, boxing fans. Um, we also saw uh, Mick Hennessy was hosting a um, boxing event on Channel Five in Redditch, I believe. Um, Shakan Peters was victorious. He became the light heavyweight champion on a points decision against Chad Sudgens. Um, Interestingly, he that's uh, Chad Sargent got a draw against um, Craig Richards, and initially uh, Craig Richards was supposed to fight um, Shakan Pitters. So hopefully we'll see that fight next because there was a bit of back and forth with those two, and I'd love to see who, who's victorious between those two. Isaac Chamberlain was also in action after not fighting in over 22 months. He got the victory. I'm not, I can't remember the, uh, the boxer's name. But he got a victory and it looks like he's back again, back fighting again in two weeks from now in September. So hopefully we get to see more of Isaac Chamberlain because he actually is quite good and very quite skilled. So yeah, boxing is back, baby. <laughs> and I'm excited and I can't wait. That's it for all the Boxing Weekly News Roundup from myself, Big Nige. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Hit that notification button. Don't forget, lads and lasses, I should say, because also I know you'll be watching. Um, thank you again. Peace.